Hi, this is Steve, KF4KNF, with the North Jeffco Amateur Radio League. Today we'll be discussing APRS, its history, its uses, and I will provide you with some basic information so you can set up your own APRS station. So to start, let's make sure everyone understands what APRS is. The Automatic Packet Reporting System is a way of broadcasting information into the immediate area using packet and amateur radio. This is usually done by way of the 2 meter ham band. While you can broadcast anything using APRS, you should take others into account. Often hams use this system for broadcasting their location, current weather conditions, or tactical messages. Basically, the information should be useful, respectful, and the content should always be geared towards the general public. The APRS system is open for anyone to use and hear and therefore should not be considered secure. If you're interested in seeing if there's any activity in your area, tune to 144.390 MHz. This is the national APRS frequency here in the United States. APRS is a relatively new way of communicating. It was first developed in the Hawaiian Islands in the late 60s and early 70s as a way of distributing information between the various islands. A senior research engineer with the U.S. Naval Academy pioneered the effort and used his call sign WB4APR to derive the system's name. APRS. While the FCC has allowed hams to experiment with this communication method since the early 1970s, it wasn't until the 1990s that the operating method really began to take hold. Now there are hundreds of thousands of operational APRS stations worldwide. Knowing this, some of you may be asking, why would I want to use APRS? Well, think about the last conversation you heard on a local repeater. At some point, you probably heard the hams exchanging information about their location. Instead of having to tell everyone where you are at, APRS could have told them the fraction of the time and even plotted it on the map, complete, with heading and speed information. So taking this a step further, imagine you are a net control station with 10 mobile operators supporting a large charity bike ride that is spread out over 25 miles. Instead of asking each of your operators their location when you need something, with APRS you can simply look at a map, call them, and direct the resources as needed. APRS saves time, cuts down on unneeded communications, and also helps net control operators better manage their resources. Let's throw out another example. Suppose you are a weather spotter assisting the National Weather Service when a storm rolls through your community. With APRS, you have the ability to pinpoint other spotters in your area who may be able to assist in positively identifying a lowering funnel cloud. If the National Weather Service is on frequency, they can even use your location information provided by APRS to scan the cloud formation for rotation using Doppler radar. Now let's stop and remember that APRS is not just for broadcasting your location using a GPS. It's also used for broadcasting messages. For example, during that charity ride we mentioned, let's say you came across a cyclist who had a flat tire. Since your job may have been to supply water and not do bike repairs, you could use APRS to alert other operators that you need assistance. If you're interested in setting up your own APRS station, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be expensive. Often the cost varies based on what you want your APRS station to do. At a minimum, you will need a radio, a TNC, and a few cables to connect everything to your computer. Let's start with the radio. If you've heard strong APRS signals in your area, you may be able to get by with just a low-powered handheld for 2 meters. Mobile and base stations are often used as well. In general, you do not need a special radio to run APRS. Although some may be advertised as APRS ready, any radio will work. The APRS radio will just make the use of APRS on the go a little easier. We'll talk more on this later. Now for the TNC. I use a Cantronics KPC-3, which I purchased at Ham Radio Outlet several years back for about $150. If cost is an issue, you could get by with a cheaper TNC and still have a good working station. One thing to keep in mind when looking for APRS TNCs is the availability of ports on the back of the unit. If you plan on using your TNC with any add-ons, you will need to have these ports. Technically, you could set up a stationary APRS setup with just these parts and you would be able to send messages and broadcast your location to others around you. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to continue by adding a few more toys to the setup. 
If you plan on operating your APRS station mobile, you will need a GPS that has an NMEA connector on the back so your GPS can connect to your TNC and supply it with positioning information. Adapters are available for most GPS units. Just check with the unit's manufacturer. Also, while you're at it, consider getting a cable that also supplies power to your GPS so it doesn't have to run off of batteries. The last thing you will need is a 9-pin serial cable or a DB9 cable. This will connect your TNC to the computer or APRS enabled radio. Remember to read your TNC's owner's manual to get everything configured. The setup steps really vary from one manufacturer to another. After you get the TNC talking to your computer via its serial port, you will need to build a cable to connect the TNC to your radio. Often the instruction manual for the TNC will have hints on how to do this. Basically, you will be using four of the nine wires in the serial cable to control the transmit and receive functions. Here are a few cables I've built so my Cantronics TNC will work with a few select mobiles and HTs.